Good morning, my dear students. Uh, how are you today? This is Dr. Osama Kashwa, and I'm going to teach you the managerial accounting. Um, for this term, we have we will talk first about um, uh, the costs and uh, so let's let's at the start we have to review about the main the main pillar or the main uh, financial statements, which is the balance sheet and the income statement, the balance sheet and the income statement. So we'll take them one by one and we'll go first to the balance sheet. So let's see what do we mean by the balance sheet. This is a general revision because some of the students might not have an idea and some other students might don't know what is the meaning of the balance sheet due to their own literature studies. Anyhow, no problem. Let's go for the balance sheet and know what is the meaning of the balance sheet. The balance sheet is like exactly what you own and what you have to pay in very simple words. What you own and what you have to pay. This is the balance sheet. So here it is an example. Let us go to the example directly. Here is what you own on the left side is the assets and what you have to pay is on your right hand side is the liabilities. And at the end of the period, which is usually in the balance sheet, one year, one business year. So both the sides must be equals to each other. The balance will equals the liabilities. So what you have is exactly is what you have to pay. What you have is exactly as what you have to pay. What you own or possess is exactly what you owe the people or the people you have to pay to the people, to the others. Okay, let's go now and check out what is the, the components of the uh, uh, balance sheet. What are the components of the balance sheet? So the first components of the balance sheet is the assets. We can start with the current assets. What are the current assets? The word, this word, the current assets. Current assets are all the assets that start in money in the figure of money and return back to the figure of money within one year, which is the cycle, the business cycle. We call it the business cycle. So what do we mean by this in more details? It means, as example, the first one you start with the cash and cash equivalences. Here we go. We have here, as example, your cash is 100,000. Account receivables means what? Means like people have to pay you, but it's you, you sold, but you sold with documents, with papers, okay? As example, invoices, you sold with bill of exchange, you sold with sheiks, those all account receivable. This 20,000 means other people have to pay to you 20,000. The others have to pay for you 20,000. Inventory, inventory, the stock which you have in your warehouses. If you have a shop, as example, the goods, the goods which you have, the items which you have in this shop is 15,000. Prepaid expenses, 4,000. You pay these expenses in advance. Investments, 10,000. So I would say all this will come 100 plus 20 plus 15 plus 4 plus 10 would be all 149,000, which represent the current assets. And this is the first point. You said current, there are current assets and fixed assets, yes. So the current assets, like you see inventory, it's goods, but it will turn back into figure of money within the period of the business cycle, that is one year. So it's, any item start money and return back to the money figure within the business cycle one year. It goes inside it goes in this category, in the current asset category. It goes inside it in the current asset category. That's fine, perfect. These are the current assets. Now we'll go to the um, Second type of the assets, which is called fixed assets. Fixed assets include the buildings, the equipments, the land. Okay, 
how am I like a student, how I will signalize between the fixed assets and the current assets? How can I make a distinction between the current assets and the fixed assets? Okay, the answer is like this. The fixed assets, usually you buy it, it's in most of the cases, it is in the start of the, your project, your business. It's like the land, the building, the equipment, look at this. You don't buy land every day. You don't buy buildings every day. You don't buy equipments every day. Yes, that's true. But in the same time, those things is very, very expensive. And in the same time, it's a strategic decision. A small fault or mistake here cause leads to disaster. And in the same time, and this is the most important part, that those assets, you buy it not for the purpose of selling it back. You don't buy it to sell it and win profit of whatever the profit. No, 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 no. You buy it for the purpose of production to help you to generate profits. You buy the land to build the factory. You, you buy the buildings to start working. You buy the equipments to make profits. All those you buy them to make profits. For that reason, we call it fixed assets. Fixed means long-term assets. Okay, so we have from the current now 149, 100 plus 20 plus 15 plus 4 plus 10. This is 149, the total current assets. Now we will add to them, add 24,300 for the land, 250,000 for the buildings, 550,000 for the equipments. But watch out this. As long as there are equipments, which, which means machinery, like the cars, machines, anything that works with gas and oil or whatever, all those, they have something is called deprecation. What do you mean by the word, this word deprecation? Deprecation means that your asset gradually, gradually lose part of its own value. If you buy a car today, I mean, today you buy a car with $40,000. After one year, this car will be 30,000. Then the depreciation will equals 40,000 minus the, the present value of 30,000, then the depreciation will be 10,000. It means that your car's value reduced with $10,000. It was $40,000 and became $30,000, then the depreciation is only $10,000. Okay, here I get, so this is the fixed list, but depreciation, we deduct the depreciation, we deduct it, subtract it. So 24,000 plus 250,000 plus 50,000 minus 5,000, okay? Because depreciation must be deducted, then other assets, what are the other assets? We have intangible assets. What do we mean by intangible assets? The shop reputation. Reputation means how much is famous, all the people know it or no. If your shop has reputation and all the people know it, it is intangible, means an asset. Intangible means you cannot touch it, but still it is an asset and you have to estimate it with amount of money. Like Tim Hortons example, it's a brand name. Any brand names is, intent, is including intangible assets. When the, the owner of Tim Hortons sold, sell a shop, he sell it with its, his own reputation or he consider or count for the reputation of the shop, okay? Minus accumulated amortizations. And this is deducted. So you will do here like this, the lands 24,000. Uh, we said 149 plus 24,300 plus 250 plus 50,000 minus 5,000, which is the depreciation, plus intangible assets, 4,000 4, minus the accumulated amortization, which is 200. Then this will give me what I own, the assets, what I own, 472.5 for seven to one hundred thousand dollars. Let's come to the other side, which is the liabilities. And like you see here, 
if here what I have, here what I have to pay, here what I own, here what I have to pay. So if there is accounts receivable here, here is accounts payable, it means that you wrote checks to the people because you took from them goods or services and you have to pay for them back. So here is called account payable. You have to pay to the people $30,000. You wrote permission notes for $10,000. You have to pay the people $10,000. Accrued expenses, you have uh, two, uh, this four, 5,000, you add it to on your own uh, current liabilities and the different revenues means you, there are revenues for you, but you didn't receive it yet. It's $2,000. So all this together comes to $47,000. $47, okay. Then plus you have a long-term debt of $200,000. Plus you have a long-term debt of $200,000, right? So, so what? So we'll add all this together. 30,000 plus 10,000 plus 5,000 plus 2,000 plus 47. This all will come to 47,000 plus 200,000. This all will be 247,000. Then this is, now this is the, the current liabilities and this is the fixed liabilities. Then the owner's equity, the owner's equity. And we said, as we said, that the balance sheet consist of the assets will equals liabilities and owner's equity. Here it is. Here are the assets will equals the liabilities. Here are the liabilities. Plus, this is the owner's equity. Look at this now. So the whole assets will equals the whole liabilities plus the owner's equities. And that's it. So, so what? So the owner's equity, it consists of because it's a business entity independent now, so you have to separate between the business and the business owner's money, the people who made this business. It's now liability on the company itself, on the entity, it's a liability. So what they pay for the company to work, it is liability now against the company itself, that the company hold this money to them and has to be paid to them back. So. The common stocks, additional paid in capital, retained earnings. If I have earnings, I will add it here, okay? But this earnings, I didn't distribute it yet. It is retained, retained 179, but I will deduct the treasure stock of the $2,000. When I, balance sheet means the assets must equal the liabilities, assets must equal the liabilities. Both the sides must be the same. Both the sides must be the same. Now we'll go for a small exercise. Yet you guys will do this exercise. Then after this, we'll go to the next statements, which is the income statement in another video. Thank you so much. Mm. So here is the example or here the exercise which we will do right away. Uh, given the following data, draw the balance sheet, draw the balance sheet. We have this information now, 100,000 in lands, 150,000 equipments, 180,000 buildings, 140,000 accounts receivable, 90,000 accounts payable, 10,000 retained earning, 140,000 long-term debt, or debts and 70,000 intangible assets, intangible assets, 50,000 prepaid expenses, and 10,000 annual depreciation. So, the first thing is first question is define my first question is define the balance sheet and its importance. Why it's important? The balance sheet we said financial situation in any moment. In a particular moment, especially this every, the particular moment is annually, every one year. For that reason, as example, you will find it here. It's the balance sheet on December 31 at the end, the last day of the year to be done. It's telling, it tells me the financial situation of all the belongings and uh, amounts due of the company what they have and what they ought to pay. 
So it tell me the financial situation in a particular moment. It's important, like we know, the importance of it based on this data of the uh, balance sheet, all the decision, decision process and managerial decisions are depending upon this uh, balance sheet. So decision maker in management will never make a decision without taking advantage of these numbers, never, because these numbers will tell me where I am exactly. So by this number, by the using of these numbers in making decisions, then it will let me go to the where I want to go. So it will help the management in future planning and in analyzing the financial situation. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. We'll go to the second video about the income statements. Thank you.